about to head out. As you guys can see, pretty nice weather. It is a bit breezy and a little chilly, but it's pretty nice for winter. And actually, while I'm out here, that reminded me I probably should turn on the Lambo, but I'll probably do that tomorrow. Today, we do have 20 pieces of mail to send out, 20 envelopes, hopefully one day. They're all for the clothing brand. But until then, let's work on this, I guess. exactly sure when but I did check earlier this morning on the tracking and it was still in Texas so they hadn't really made movement so maybe they created the shipping label but it hadn't actually been um, you know maybe the product ha hasn't actually been accepted by the UPS or USPS or whatever um, so it just you know they created the uh, label internally so that that might be what's going on there so we could probably expect that in the next week uh, give or take supercharger I mean we'll probably just have to wait it out see what happens I'm not really sure what to predict of that and yeah I do need to redo the carbon wrap for the gas lid since I took it off last week didn't really have time to redo it um, especially considering I'd have to pull out an extension cable grab a hair dryer and all that and whatnot so I didn't really want to get into that because I didn't have time like that so probably going to do that within the next couple of days maybe I do need to do the tire markers on the right wheel as you guys know I did red uh, markings on the left tire in the rear but I didn't have time to do the right one and that was a couple of weeks ago and um, I you know since then I still haven't had time to do the right one so right now we have red tire markers on the left wheel that say Toyo tires and like the brand or whatever um, or the not the brand but the, the design it is um, and then the right wheel has like literally no markings whatsoever so yeah, I need to get that done. So right now, those are the main priorities. Do the tire marker on the right side. And um, I already forgot what the other thing was, but I already said it. So those are the two things. And then obviously, once we get the 71 finals, I'm probably going to do that within a couple of days. And yeah, and then once the supercharger is here, obviously, we're going to make moves on that. The HREs I'm waiting on, um, as I mentioned, I haven't ordered them just yet, but I know exactly what I want. And damn, somebody got the SL Benz that I want. But soon enough. Anyways, um, so yeah, HRE is waiting on hood pins. I have not ordered them, but I'm thinking about them. But I'm not really sure how I want to go about the hood pins. Do I get them and hold on to them until the supercharger is getting installed and sort of have everything done in one swing? Um, since I don't want to be the one drilling into the uh, into the hood. Or, you know, do I just uh, get the hood pins? I actually have maybe my neighbor or somebody put them on and, you know, we'll get the supercharger done later on. So that's sort of where we're at right now. I think it would look really badass with the hood pins, but um, haven't really decided on how I want to proceed on that. I think once the vinyls get installed and everything, I'll have a better idea of like what the car looks like. And then at that point, I'll probably decide whether I want the extra tidbit of having the hood pins or do I just let them be uh, for now. All right, made it to the post office with all the mail in one piece, at least I believe so. And yeah, hopefully it doesn't take too long, but I'll probably be the one holding up the damn line. So it looks like I warmed the tires too much 
because the letters are starting to smudge, which obviously wasn't like that before. And I don't know what's going on here. Why it's the prints all like looking weird now. Another day and another dollar lost. We are taking the Mustang out today, shooting another short vlog maybe or something of that nature. But yeah, as you guys could see, you could see some marks, but the vinyl looks fine. But obviously yesterday, as you guys saw, it was all screwed up. The tire markers definitely a bit messed up now. So they all need to be redone and cleaned up. And obviously this side, I still need to do it. So if it doesn't rain tomorrow, we'll probably be working on that project. We do need to turn the Mustang on, but so far it's been treating us pretty well but obviously turning it on constantly is not ideal i do need to turn on the lambo at some point today and yeah so that needs to be done i wanted to actually take the lambo with us but unfortunately as you guys would imagine every place isn't the safest so i'm not even going to bother trying to take the lambo um you know the place we go to get groceries isn't always the safest. There's always people walking by and whatnot. So I just don't feel completely comfortable with taking the Lambo because it might not be there in one piece when we come back outside of the grocery store. So um, that's sort of that, but we will be taking out the Lamborghini very soon. I believe my dad actually wants to take the green Mustang out and put the C55 AMG either in the garage or in the backyard with the other Mustang. Uh, he has been saying that for a couple of weeks now, so we'll see. But if he does do that, I'll probably move the Lamborghini out, maybe. But we'll we'll pretty much see what we'd end up doing. Maybe I'll just keep it in this very spot at the end so I could have easy access to it and just need to move the Mustang pretty much during the weekdays um, to take this out. It might actually be a while before we leave, so I decided why not bring out these keys and start these cars while we wait. Pretty clean, kind of dusty, but I'm pretty satisfied with it. Started up pretty decently, could have been better, but it is what it is. Fortunately, as you guys can see, no check engine light or anything like that. And I think we have a full tank of gas before I put it in here, so we do have a full tank of gas as well, so that's always nice. So I guess we're leaving. Got the Lambo on, I didn't turn on the other Mustang. But yeah, so ready to leave in this Mustang. Going to let the Lambo run. Maybe a couple more minutes, and that's going to be it. And yeah, once we get home, I'll turn on the other Mustang. But for now, at least I got one car out of the way, I guess. And yeah, we'll just go from there. And with that, we're officially heading out. Since the door's already locked and I don't feel like going inside, I guess we're going to be taking this key, the 04 Mustang's key, and this GT key with us everywhere we go today. This jacket already felt bulky to begin with, but now that I have like hella keys in the pockets and whatnot, it feels even bigger than it did before. But regardless, we got a somewhat puffy jacket on, as I like to call it. It is California cold, which is different than actual cold. But if you live in California, it's cold enough for you to complain about it. So that's sort of where we're at today. It is a little on the chillier side than normal and you know I'm sure everybody will be in sweaters and whatnot but if it was this cold in another state people would probably be out butt naked and shit so sort of where we're at um sort of experienced that when I was in Carolina as well actually because obviously North Carolina is a lot colder than it is in California and we had snow here and there but not really but when it would be raining 
even when it wasn't raining but especially when it was raining it would be storming hella hard it would be freaking cold as hell i like to call it ice cold because it would be so cold that it would literally feel like you were having like you had like ice cubes in your clothes or something and no matter how many layers you wore when the wind would hit your ass would feel it <laughs> and it would feel like you didn't have clothes on at all because that's how strong or that's how cold the wind was so you know obviously nothing like that in california even on a quote-unquote cold day it's like freaking not actually cold but um got my jacket on regardless i was over here adjusting my seat because it felt like i was sort of like like a statue sitting here and i started pressing all types of random buttons just to see what would happen and now i feel like i'm sitting like like five feet higher than i was before and i don't know what the hell i did but when i looked down i i saw a part of the seat increase there goes the police um and i don't know and then the back started increasing once i played with some other knob and now i feel like i'm sitting so high that my head is about to like touch the freaking ceiling or something but upside is on the very rare occasion that probably will never occur if there was a girl that pulled up she would probably think i'm like seven feet tall based on my seating position even though not seven feet tall i'm not short by any means but this shit has me on some other level I feel like i'm freaking like high as shit in the air so i need to figure this out because like now when i'm adjusting it i feel like it's moving the seat back instead of down but uh yeah still pretty fun here we are a couple of minutes later and at this point, I feel like my seating position is worse than it was several minutes back. For some reason, either I'm too stupid or like maybe I'm like too focused on the road to really like understand. But for some reason, I can't move the back end of my seat. The entire seat moves when I try to move it. So we have one function that just moves the entire seat back and forward. And then we have one function that makes my lower back either more tense or less tense. Um, and then, you know, we have the up and down feature or something. Which sounds a little inappropriate now that I think about it. But, uh, yeah. So I can't, I can't figure out which one of these damn buttons moves the back part of my seat. But... Here we are, stay tuned, guys. Got to our first destination, and man, if this shit doesn't shut the and yeah not hopping out of this one i think we're only having like two or three stops today so nothing crazy happening by any means once i get home i'm probably going to work on social media and yeah i don't think i'm gonna work on the cars today um but i'll probably work on social media might do some legal work and yeah that's probably going to be the night obviously in some family time but outside of that that's going to be pretty much the day and with that on to the next stop i could be tripping but this guy in the at and van i almost feel like he was listening to arthur but i could be completely tripping but somebody was definitely listening to Arthur. Maybe it's a TikTok audio, I'm not really sure, but I heard the Arthur theme song. Not that I'm hating shit, I, I love Arthur too. I watch Arthur right now, if I could. Got kind of backed up over here. All these new Tesla charging stations. 
these muscle cars and shit won't make it very far. I think we're gonna keep all our gas guzzlers because this shit's too much fun. Look at that Challenger looking smooth. I'm not sure what it is. I could I could definitely see that connection between that and where we're at now all these years later like literally 20 years later and you know it definitely still has that muscle car feel to it even though it's different in the sense of technology and everything but it still has that uh, unique uh, muscle car soul to it which I really enjoy and I think that's my favorite car or favorite part about this car and you know what's uh enjoyable about it is still that um muscle car that i grew up on pretty much you know a lot of these cars gets really uh refined and whatnot and you don't really feel it that's another thing that i actually really like about the lamborghini is you know it's very raw i've not i've never driven like a modern lamborghini but you know from what i've heard and everything it seems like they're very refined compared to older Lamborghinis, whether you're talking about Gallardos or Murcielagos or Diablos, and obviously very much Countach's. So it's like those were like the raw cars, and all the newer cars are kind of refined, even with I guess the Ventador being I think single clutch, if I recall correctly, and it being sort of a rough drive, it's still going to be more refined than the older Lambos. So I think that's what I kind of like about this. It's like, still has that uh, muscle car soul to it. Loki can't even figure out this audio thing. Like sometimes the audio works, sometimes it doesn't. Even though my phone is connected to the CarPlay, sort of everything's connected. It's stop number two, and I don't think I'm getting out of this stop either. But uh, yeah, we'll just see. Had a lot of fun actually driving here. Sort of opened it up a little bit, considering the tires are warm. And uh, yeah, we could have a little more fun with it. And with that, we are on to the next stop. And uh, yeah, the camera fell right on top of my Mustang Daga. So he fell off the uh, thing and I have no idea where he fell so that's a little unfortunate I can't tell if you guys prefer me just 
driving? Should I talk more? Not really sure, so I'm trying to mix it up, maybe have some talking, have scenes with a little less talking. bad the gas tank is actually really huge so what ends up happening is that I don't actually have to fill up very often even when I drive it a lot whereas this car gas mileage is probably just as bad as Lambo you know the Lambo could do about around 10 on a good day this car does about 10 on a bad day that was a nice Audi S4 uh, wanted one of those years ago if you guys remember or you know if you're new to the channel I did want a Audi S4 that I was actually going to uh, lightly modify years ago but I ended up getting a C63 instead but regardless um, with this car you know on a bad day it'll do uh, 10 miles per gallon and what happens is I need to fill up fairly often I actually have the same issue with the 20 or the 2004 Mustang it does I think it it's quote unquote stated to do about 20 miles per gallon maybe give or take and it has a tune on it but that car would need to be filled up a lot because of the small tank size and i'm experiencing something similar here tank size might be bigger in this car than it was in the 04 mustang but this uh, with a v8 and everything it does chew more gasoline so it, it probably goes through gas just as quickly as the 04 mustang I'll try not to talk when I'm accelerating. I knew, I, I noticed that was an issue and a lot of people said that, you know, you couldn't hear me, which is, you know, the main issue was the acceleration. I'm trying to talk a little louder as well, but when I was accelerating, it, it made the audio pretty bad. So anyways, uh, yeah, so I do need to fill up again. I filled up the car, I think three times already since I bought it, I'm not really sure, but, you know, sometimes I fill it up when it's halfway, sometimes I fill it up when it's closer to empty, um, but you know, it, it does need to be filled up fairly often, it feels like. Got this charger right behind me, so we about to see what they do. And I'm, I'm, I'm literally just kidding when I see all these cars, I mean, we're not doing anything. And even if we were doing something, I mean, we are in Mexico, so it's perfectly fine, right? I can only imagine what this car will feel like supercharged. I've never been in a supercharged car that I could remember obviously i've been in some turbocharged cars but they were turbocharged from the factory so i haven't experienced a turbocharged car that was turboed after the fact you know um, i think the audi a4 i had was turbocharged i think the m5 is twin turbocharged if i'm not mistaken um, c63 was twin turbocharged and all of that's factory obviously I can't tell if that Beamer wanted some or, I mean, maybe, or they're just having fun, I guess. But yeah, so having experienced a supercharged car, I don't think whatsoever. And yeah, I don't know. I haven't really experienced a highly modified car in general. So this Mustang will actually be, I guess the first, there was 
was a 2001 Mustang that my parents almost got one time and that car was fairly modified I don't remember exactly how modified it was but I think it was turbocharged as well and now we're on to our final stop which I believe it's our final stop which is actually hot pot so let's get going I guess I'm trying to figure out how I could search it on here but it's acting a little weird so Impressions. I got what she wanted. 
that's why she in my sex I'm with slimes, wipe your nose, we a blessed It's my time, I'm taking what's mine Why you worry about you, I don't worry about mine And with that, the meal is over. I don't know how many hours pass by, but we are all full as hell. And yeah, I think we might have one more stop or we might go home. I'm not sure what I'm doing, but the uh, rest of my family is going to make one more stop. All that damn food got me chilling. Like this. Ahead. Just over here cruising, just sitting back. No passenger princess to hold my hand, but that's cool. I'll hold my own hand. I feel like we're literally going to the same complex where, uh, I'm pretty sure this literally is the complex where somebody was uh, trying to get the Lamborghini towed for like absolutely no reason. Um, yeah, I don't remember what Otto's story was. I don't think it was Jiffy Loop, but I'm pretty sure it was this very complex. And uh, my friend and I had gone to get tapioca or boba. And yeah, somebody tried to get the Lamborghini towed for like absolutely no reason. They said I wasn't allowed to park there, even though it was an open parking spot. But interesting times, to say the least. Car's going to sound like once it's supercharged. It would be dope if it had a wine to it. I've never really heard a Whipple charger, so I'm not sure if uh, Whipple superchargers have a loud wine or not. But I'm sure I'd enjoy the hell out of the car even more if it did. Just got out of our final stop and it's time to head home. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think it's going to start raining at some point, but obviously we don't want to drive on drag wheels in the rain. So let's get ourselves home and move on to work, including editing this vlog. I guess we kind of made ourselves a friend by giving the other Mustang GT some way, but who knows? Now that we're finally home, time to turn on the O4. Here goes nothing. I'm not really too concerned about it. I even used the key remote to unlock the car. So I wasn't really expecting any issues with it. I just hope nobody's sleeping. I mean, it is like 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So I mean, it should be fine. Not gonna lie, I was chilling inside the house and forgot that it, the car was even running. But turning it off and heading back inside.